Hi, I am Elephant. Today let's see the anime named Chillin' in my 30s after getting fired from the Demon King's army. The main character, Daryl, is a middle-aged loser in the Demon Clan, who works for decades but is finally fired. Later, he finds that he is actually a human and has the strongest power of humans. With his supreme strength, he not only gets many sexy beauties but is also admired by countless people. Now let's start today's recap. At the beginning of the story, Daryl is summoned to the main hall by the new demon lord. In this world, demons and humans look no difference, and the biggest difference between them is that demons can cast magic while humans can't. Daryl is a dark soldier in the demon race who hasn't learned to cast magic for decades, and the new demon lord thinks Daryl is just a loser, so he ruthlessly fires him. Now Daryl can only leave this city, where he has been serving as a dark soldier for decades, and he does not know where to live in the future. He walks into a forest, and he hasn't eaten in days. While he is lying on the grass and thinking about where to get some food, a girl jumps over him, and a giant ape monster appears behind her. Seeing that such a cute girl is in danger, Daryl blocks the attack of the giant ape, but because he has been hungry for several days, he is quickly knocked away by the giant ape. At this time, he finds the dagger that has fallen out of the girl's bag. It is humiliating that the demon race uses human weapons, but now he can't care about so much. He has never used a human weapon, and he shows a very strange posture. Fortunately, he uses the dagger indiscriminately and accidentally stabs the heart of the giant ape. Finally, he saves the girl. Looking at the handsome and powerful man Daryl, the girl immediately invites him to be a guest in her village. In this world, demons and humans are at odds with each other. Daryl is afraid that his demon identity will be exposed, so he wants to refuse. But when he hears that he can eat delicious food in the village, he finally agrees to the girl's request. Later, Daryl is taken back to the girl's home. The girl introduces herself as Marika and introduces her parents to Daryl. Her parents ask about Daryl's origins, and in order not to reveal his identity, Daryl lies that he was fired because the boss son inherited the family business and thought that he was useless. And now he is homeless. Unexpectedly, Marika excitedly says that Daryl must be a good person who was willing to sacrifice his life to save her, and then invites Daryl to live in their village. Daryl wants to refuse, but after glancing at Marika's ample body, he agrees. After dinner, Daryl stays in his room in a daze. At this time, Marika comes to Daryl's door alone, saying that she was the one others relied on before, and this is the first time she is protected by a man, which makes Daryl a little confused. It seems that Marika has quietly had a crush on Daryl. The next morning, Marika's father, the leader of the village's Adventurer's Guild, hears that Daryl has the ability to defeat monsters and invites him to join the Adventurer's Guild. But before joining the guild, he needs to sign an adventurer contract, which Daryl knows is only available to humans, and the demons will be punished if they sign it. He wants to find an excuse to refuse, but Marika forcibly takes him to sign the contract in order to keep him. However, the punishment that should have appeared does not appear, and Daryl successfully completes the ritual. Just then, Daryl realizes that he is actually a human. Now that he has become an adventurer, he must test his abilities. Humans can infuse aura in their weapons to fight. Aura has four types, which are slash, sting, hit, and protect, and each of them matches different weapons. To Marika's father's surprise, the four types of Daryl's aura all reach their highest. This perhaps can only be achieved by the legendary hero of humans, which greatly frustrates Marika's father, who was once an adventurer. After calming down, Marika's father dismisses the idea of keeping Daryl in the village, believing that Daryl should go to the big city with his powerful strength instead of staying in this small village. Seeing Marika crying aside, Daryl finally says it was Marika who saved him, so he wants to stay in the village to repay the favor. Hearing this, Marika throws herself at Daryl excitedly, with a happy smile on her face. Now that Daryl has decided to stay, Marika's father introduces the villagers to the new adventurer Daryl. Just then, an adventurer named Gashida, who has a D rank and looks down upon the E rank adventurer Daryl, comes to provoke him. Resignedly, Marika's father can't stop it, since adventurers must gain the respect of others with their strength in the world of adventurers. After that, Marika's father intends to send some missions to Daryl to raise his adventurer level. Recently, a powerful monster has appeared in the forest, and even Gashida has not been able to destroy it. He then takes out a picture of the monster. At this time, Marika is surprised to say, isn't this the giant ape that was wiped out by Daryl? Marika's father is overwhelmed again, with a surprised look on his face. Daryl completes his mission even before it begins. 
This great ape is the monster that Gashida intends to hunt. Gashida is particularly upset that Daryl has stolen his thunder, and Daryl has been promoted to a D rank adventurer because of this hunt. Since then, Daryl has settled in the village. One day, he takes on a task to collect herbs, and Marika offers to go with him on this mission. Ever since meeting Daryl, Marika has fallen in love with Daryl. On the way, Marika says that she is afraid that they will go separated, and takes the initiative to hold Daryl's hand, which makes Daryl a little embarrassed. During the mission, Daryl discovers that Marika is also very powerful, who can move a large tree with her bare hands, and is proficient in a lot of knowledge about medicinal herbs. He can't help but suspect that Marika was also capable of fighting back when they were attacked by that giant ape. Marika tells him that she doesn't dare to fight, so Daryl is her savior. Later, she shyly says that she hopes that Daryl will not call her Miss Marika in the future, but will be able to call her by her first name, which will make them not look like strangers. When Daryl barely calls Marika's name, Marika hugs Daryl hard, and with her excessive strength, Daryl almost chokes. At this time, they find a deer fighting against the ant monster, and then kill them. When the two take them back to the village, Gashida is furious because the ant monster was originally the monster that Gashida needs to hunt, and Daryl once again steals Gashida's thunder. Soon after, Daryl hears from the village chief that Gashida, in order to prove himself, has taken on a mission that only C-rank adventurers can take, which is to kill a blaze death scythe. It is said that the higher rank adventurers guild in the nearby town has sent a team to besiege this monster, which can prove that the death scythe is so terrifying. Worrying that Gashida will be in danger, Daryl decides to go to help Gashida. When Daryl arrives, the death scythe is chasing Gashida. Gashida's attack can't break its defenses at all, and Daryl immediately helps him. He uses the protect aura to block the death scythe's attack, and then infuses aura in his broken weapon fragments and throws it towards its body. The next moment, the death scythe's body is directly pierced. Daryl successfully defeats the death scythe, which surprises Gashida so much. After the battle, Daryl also helps Gashida bandage his wounds and then returns safely to the village with Gashida. Since then, Gashida has adored Daryl, who he regards as his brother. Daryl often takes Gashida out on missions, and every time he returns, Marika hugs Daryl hard. Since she often hugs him with too much force, Daryl is often injured. Over time, Daryl finds something strange, which is that there are many vacant houses in the village. He asks the village chief about it, and the village chief tells him that there is a mine not far from the village, and the ore produced in it contains magical powers that can be used to forge various equipment and weapons. The village used to be a transfer station for transporting ore, so there were many people living here, but many years ago, the demons occupied the mine. Since then, the people in the village have slowly dwindled, and the village has become no longer prosperous. Daryl, once a member of the demons, is also familiar with the mine, so he intends to return to the mine and discuss with his former colleagues in the mine whether they can give some ore to the village. He hopes to help the village prosper again with his limited strength. When Daryl arrives at the mine, he discovers something wrong. The guards here are lax, and Daryl easily sneaks into the mine. There is a race called Knocker in the mine, and they are a race that specializes in mining. The Knockers are very happy to see Daryl, and they got along very well with Daryl when he worked in the mine. The knockers complain to Daryl that since Daryl left, the demons have quadrupled their workload, and they can't finish their work even if they work day and night. Just then, the new overseer arrives at the mine, and Daryl hurries into hiding. The overseer complains that knockers have not completed the mining task. While knockers argue that the work is too difficult to complete, they soon start to quarrel, and knockers, in anger, attack the overseer, who then orders his subordinates to kill the disobedient knockers. At the critical moment, Daryl casually takes a piece of cloth next to him to cover his face, and then stops the group of subordinates. He then scolds the group, saying that it is very humiliating to launch attacks on non-combatants. Later, he notices a strange smell from the cloth on his face. While a knocker is complaining that his panties are missing, it turns out that the cloth that Daryl used to cover his face is the panties of a knocker. In order not to reveal his identity, Daryl can only keep it on his face. The overseer sees that there is only one opponent and orders his subordinates to take Daryl down. If Daryl were the old Daryl, he may have been no match for this group, but now that he has learned the aura of humans, coupled with his familiarity with the skills of demons, Daryl has easily got an advantage and captured the overseer after some fighting. The overseer hastens to ask Daryl for mercy, saying that he is not a part of demons and is also a non-combatant, and that it will ruin Daryl's reputation if he attacks him. It turns out that the overseer met Lord Bashvasa, one of the four generals, at a ball, and they chatted happily, so Bashvasa gave the work of the mine to him. Bashvasa once fired Daryl for his incompetence, and now the new overseer is actually recruited by connections. 
Daryl cuts off the overseer's hair as punishment and then asks him to resign, and the group of his subordinates all leave under Daryl's persuasion. In the end, Daryl successfully retakes the mine on his own. Soon after, Daryl brings the news of his recapture of the mine to the village chief, and he is willing to return the mine to the humans on the sole condition that the humans help shelter the knockers. The village chief is shocked by Daryl's strength and he agrees to Daryl's request. Soon, the nearby higher-ranked town sends troops to take over the mine, and the village gradually prospers. Marika adores Daryl more and more, and they become closer and closer. At the same time, many problems occur in the demon army because of Daryl's departure. Daryl was originally an assistant minister to the four generals, but Bashvasa was jealous of Daryl's talents and expelled him. Although Daryl can't cast magic, he has a great ability to manage armies. Now, without Daryl's help, the demon army is in chaos. This also arouses the displeasure of the demon king, who calls Bashvasa and then teaches him a lesson. Because of this, Bashvasa becomes even more hateful to Daryl. At this moment, Marika finds Daryl, shyly saying that she wants to have a child, and that even if she does, she will value her husband. Just when Marika is about to propose to Daryl, Gashida's shouting interrupts her. It turns out that Fitbitin, an adventurer sent by a nearby town to guard the mine, looks down on the countryman Gashida, and the two have a quarrel. Seeing his little brother being bullied, Daryl is no longer polite. He points out that not long ago, it was the city's adventurer's guild that was responsible for hunting the Death Scythe. However, they not only did not kill the Death Scythe, but also made it flee near the village, and it was Gashida who found it. Gashida excitedly says that it was Daryl who killed the Death Scythe. Fitbitin is a little shocked, and what Gashida said proves that Daryl has the strength of at least an A-rank adventurer. At this moment, Daryl becomes the hero of all. While everyone is busy taking over the mine, the demon sends an army to retake the mine. Daryl discovers that the leader sent by the demon is actually his old colleague Rizit. Rizit is very happy to meet Daryl here, and Daryl hears from Rizit that the demon army has been in chaos since he left. And Lord Droys, one of the four generals, sincerely hopes that Daryl will return. However, Daryl does not want to go back because of his human identity. After talking for a while, the two reach an agreement to solve the trouble. Soon, Daryl introduces Rizit to the commander sent by the humans to take over the mine, and Daryl proposes to make a deal with the demons. The ore produced in the mine will be sold to the demons at four times the market price, so that the demons will not start a war and casualties can be avoided on both sides. Fitbitin seems to strongly hate the demons, and he attacks Rizit directly, but Daryl stops it in time. The commander reprimands Fitbitin, and then agrees to Daryl's request. The mine has been taken back by Daryl, and knockers have been persuaded by Daryl to help with the mining. So the commander appreciates Daryl's talents so much. After they make a deal, Daryl sees off his friend Rizit. He has some wishes hidden in his heart. In the past, he lived among demons for decades, and now he lives in the human world. He hopes that one day in the future, the demons will be able to get along well with humans, even if it has only a slim chance. The reason why humans and demons will fight for the mine here, is that the magic ores dug up in the mine can be made into the strongest weapons in this world. Soon after, a mithril blacksmith who is obsessed with forging weapons comes to the village, and he can detect the aura in the human body through his hands. After he checks Daryl's body, he finds that Daryl is a rare genius with all attributes reaching their peaks. So the mithril blacksmith decides to help Daryl forge a super weapon made from magic ores. During then, there is an incident. The adventurer Fitbitin dislikes Daryl, so he offers a duel with Daryl, who accepts the duel with a super weapon. The super weapon is magical that it can change its shape based on the aura injected into it. After a fierce fight, Daryl wins. The commander sent to take over the mine apologizes for Fitbitin's offending Daryl, and he has been very grateful to Daryl for helping to retake the mine. After this duel, the commander appreciates Daryl's strength even more, so he invites Daryl to work for the Central Guild. Marika overhears the conversation and thinks that Daryl will be leaving, so she comes to Daryl late at night while he is in the bathroom. Daryl, who thinks it is Gashida, accidentally touches Marika's body. He thinks Marika will be angry, but Marika isn't. Marika thinks that Daryl will leave the village and head to the better central guild. She sincerely thanks Daryl, who helped the villagers pick herbs and hunt monsters during this time, and also helped the villagers retake the mine and make the entire village rich. Marika says she will always support Daryl wherever he goes. Daryl is sincerely touched by Marika, saying that when he was down, Marika took him in, and it was Marika who accompanied him through the most difficult times. If he can't eat the food made by Marika, he will be sad, so he will always stay in the village. Hearing that Daryl will not leave, Marika is very moved and gets close to him. As the chemistry spreads in the air, Daryl kisses Marika. After this night, the two get closer. The next day, Daryl tells Marika's father that he wants to marry Marika, and he promises to make Marika happy for the rest of his life. Marika hugs Daryl excitedly. 
A few years passed. Daryl and Marika have become a couple, and they gave birth to a child. Marika's father gives up the position of village chief to the young and well-motivated man Daryl. Thanks to Daryl's efforts, the village is getting better day by day. One day, Gashida tells them that the hero of this world is coming to their village. Hearing the word hero, Daryl recalls a terrifying memory. He saw the hero when he was in the demon race, and it was a middle-aged man who has terrifying strength. The hero hates the demons very much, killing countless demons in the territory of the demon race. And for Daryl, the hero is a savage lunatic. Daryl waits for the arrival of the hero with apprehension, but to his surprise, it is not the middle-aged man who comes, but a yellow-haired beautiful girl named Rady. It turns out that the former hero has retired, and Rady is the apprentice and the successor of the former hero. She is accompanied by two of her teammates. Rady comes to the village to forge a weapon using magic ores, and Daryl finally relaxes when he hears Rady's request. He takes Rady to the weapons shop, where the original Mithril blacksmith is old and dead, and now the Mithril blacksmith's apprentice has taken over the weapons shop. The apprentice confirms the aura contained in Rady's body by touching her palm. Over the next few days, he will forge an exclusive magic weapon for Rady. Except for forging a weapon, Rady is here for another reason, which is to find the last teammate to go with her to fight against the demon lord. So Daryl has to build a competition venue for fighting for her. The adventurers in the village participate in the competition, but they are so weak that Rady rejects them all. Gashida also takes part in the competition. He attacks with magic in the distance, and when Rady is resisting Gashida's attacks, she doesn't control her power well and almost hurts Gashida. Luckily, Daryl intervenes in time to throw an apple at Rady, blocking her attack. Rady discovers that Daryl is the most powerful person in the village, so she challenges Daryl, and although Daryl refuses, Rady insists on attacking. After a fierce battle between the two, Rady discovers that she is no match for Daryl. After the battle, she sincerely invites Daryl to become her teammate and fight the demon lord together. Daryl just wants to stay in the village and take good care of the villagers, as well as his wife and child. Rady thinks that Daryl doesn't take advantage of his powerful strength, so she is very angry. In Rady's mind, nothing is more important than fighting the demon lord, so she follows Daryl to see what he is up to every day. Rady sees Daryl showing up in the village every day, working hard for the villagers to make the village better, and the people in the village have great respect for Daryl, the village chief. When the sun goes down, Daryl goes home with his wife and child to enjoy the happiness of the family. At this moment, Rady finally understands that everyone has different things to cherish, and in Daryl's mind, protecting the people of the village is much more important than fighting the demon lord. So Rady asks Daryl out late at night, and in the previous battle, Daryl blocked her strongest attack. Before that, there was only one person who could do it, and that was the former hero. In Rady's mind, Daryl's strength is second only to that of the former hero. She continues to persuade Daryl to fight the demons, but Daryl tells her that the demons are not as bad as she thinks, and most of them only fight humans to protect their companions. Daryl doesn't want to see them hurt because everyone has their own family. Rady is conquered by Daryl's strength and mind, and she no longer persuades him to join her team. Instead, she asks him to be her teacher and train her. When she says this, her face turns red. After thinking, Daryl agrees to Rady's request. After Daryl solves Rady's problem, another guest comes to the village, one of the four demon kings, Zebiance. Zebiance comes this time because she needs a new weapon made of magic ores, but she accidentally meets Daryl. She orders Daryl to give her all the ores in the village. Although Daryl is now the village chief, he cannot give the resources of the village to others casually, and Daryl refuses her request for the sake of the villagers. Daryl used to be a demon who couldn't cast magic, and Zebiance looks down on him. She wants to threaten Daryl, but is frightened by a look from Marika. Daryl is afraid that the two women will fight, so he quickly proposes to go out for a walk. Once outside, Zebiance casts magic, intending to teach Daryl a lesson. She is good at using wind spells, and she moves and attacks very fast. She thinks she can easily defeat Daryl, but what she doesn't expect is that Daryl has awakened his aura and is very strong in combat. After some fighting, Zebiance is defeated, and her panties are snatched by Daryl. This makes Daryl a little embarrassed, and finally Daryl promises Zebiance that he will sell a part of the magic ores for Zebiance to make weapons at a very low price. However, the crisis is not over. In the bathhouse, Zebiance meets Rady, who hates demons very much. Daryl is afraid that they will fight, so he quickly rushes into the bathhouse to stop them. But in the end, he accidentally touches the bodies of the two girls and is kicked out of the bathhouse. 
Actually, Rady recognizes Zebians, whom she once fought against during her battle against demons. Rady asks Daryl why he knows the four demon kings. Daryl confesses his tragic life. He was actually raised by demons, and accidentally learned that he was a human after being fired by the demons. When Rady learns the truth, she doesn't blame Daryl. However, she still can't tolerate the demons staying in the human village. So Rady and Zebians meet for a duel, and the two have similar strength, fighting very fiercely. Just then, Daryl's son wakes up and sees the plump bodies of the two women. Seemingly hungry, he rushes towards them. An accident then happens. During the battle, the two women shoot down a huge rock, which flies in the direction of the baby. Daryl quickly hugs his child, while Zebians and Rady strike together to smash the rock. Zebian's attitude towards the baby makes Rady realize that perhaps it is true that, as Daryl said, the demons aren't all bad. The two women become well disposed towards each other, and they finally get along well with each other. The problem is finally resolved. But another person that Daryl is afraid of comes to the village, the former hero Alanzer. Daryl once saw Alanzer killing countless demons, and in his opinion, Alanzer is a savage lunatic. But in the villagers' opinions, Alanzer is a big hero. Hearing that the former hero comes to the village, they line up to greet him, and Alanzer treats humans very friendly. Alanzer comes to the village this time because he heard that his apprentice, Rady, has been in the village for a long time. He guesses that Rady doesn't have the confidence to fight the demon lord, so he decides to come to Rady and teach her the skills he hasn't had time to teach her. Next, let's see Alanzer's teaching. Daryl finds that no matter how Rady attacks, Alanzer can easily dodge. Seeing Alanzer's strength, Daryl is worried, and he wants to quickly send him away. However, the accident still happens. Just when everyone is having lunch, Zebians accidentally casts magic, and Alanzer senses that there is a demon in the village, so he directly finds Zebians' location. At this moment, Alanzer becomes very terrifying, and he wants to kill Zebians immediately. Daryl fights against him fiercely to stop him. Daryl can use all weapons with his aura, which is the same as Alanzer. This surprises Alanzer, but the former hero is so powerful that Daryl is quickly knocked to the ground. Alanzer doesn't understand why. As a human, Daryl wants to protect the demons. Daryl tells Alanzer that he has heard that the reason why Alanzer hates the demons so much is that Alanzer's wife and children have been killed by the demons. Daryl was raised by demons since he was a child, and in his heart, Zebians and the other demons are like his family, so he also wants to protect his family. After asking, Alanzer knows that 33 years ago, when Daryl was a baby, he was given to Gran Verza to raise by one of the four demon kings, Bazetan. At this moment, a memory flashes through Alanzer's mind. It was the demon king named Bazetan who killed his wife, and later Alanzer killed Bazetan with revenge. Alanzer found only his wife's body. Without seeing his child's body, he thought that his child had also died. But now, hearing about what happened to Daryl, coupled with the fact that Daryl has the same characteristics of Aura as himself and that Aura can be inherited, Alanzer thinks that Daryl may be his long-lost child. Just when Daryl is shocked, the village is visited by someone big. That is, Granverza, the one who raised Daryl. Seeing the demon Granverza, Alanzer intends to fight him, but Daryl stands in front of Alanzer and tells him that Granverza was the one who raised him. For Daryl, Granverza is like his father. Granverza has long considered Daryl his child, and he is relieved to see how powerful Daryl is now. Alanzer is a little envious to learn that his child was raised by demons. He should have had the time to live with his kid, and it was demons who ruined all this. Furious, Alanzer decides to teach Granverza a lesson. Granverza is sorry for the harm done to Alanzer by the demons, and he is willing to be punished by Alanzer. At the critical moment, Marika appears to stop the fight between the two and shouts loudly, Please don't let your grandson see such an embarrassing battle scene. Granverza and Alizer learn that Daryl has become a father. At this point, Daryl tells Alanzer, You may not be able to go back in time to be a father, but now you can enjoy the time with your grandson. After that, Granverza and Alanzer stop fighting, and they enjoy their time with their grandson. At night, Granverza and Alanzer find Daryl's father-in-law to drink together, and the three get along very well. Soon after, Alanzer tells Granverza his real feelings. He has just learned from Daryl that Daryl was raised by a good father, and he sincerely thanks Granverza for making his child an excellent man. The two shake hands and make peace, and Daryl is very pleased to see this. Alanzer and Granverza stay in the village for the time being, intending to spend time with their grandson. Just then, someone comes to inform Daryl that the mine they have previously retaken has been attacked by monsters. Daryl immediately rushes over with others, only to see a huge monster that resembles a flying dragon. The monster, which has a terrifying power, keeps spitting flames. With just a glance, Granverza recognizes this monster as the magical fire beast Salamandra and joins forces with others to fight against it. Strangely, Salamandra directly leaves after it sees Daryl, who senses a familiar feeling on it. 
Granverza seems to have guessed the identity of Salamandra, and he says goodbye to Daryl, leaving with the demon Zebians. Soon after, Granverza finds his son, Bashverza. He sees Bashverza's blood-red left eye and guesses that Bashverza has entered the Forbidden Land of the Demon Kingdom, the Demon Lord's Vault, to steal the Forbidden Hex magic and summon Salamandra. This spell is very powerful, but it is also very dangerous. When Bashverza was a child, his father was always very strict with him but very patient with Daryl. The reason why Bashverza asked Salamandra to attack Daryl's mine is that he is jealous because Daryl is always loved by others, while no one cares about him though he is gifted. Seeing his father blaming him for Daryl, Bashverza is furious and summons Salamandra, vowing to make Daryl pay, and then leaves riding Salamandra. At this moment, Daryl is rescuing trapped knockers in the mine when suddenly a huge strange face appears on the wall inside the cave. This strange face calls himself the Magical Earth Beast, and the magic orc produced in the mine is part of his body. Seeing Daryl's weapon made of magic ores, he feels very happy because the weapon was made with great care. Knowing that a part of his body was treated with care, he intends to give Daryl a reward. With a flash of light, some seals of the magic ores on Daryl's weapon are lifted. Later, the magical earth beast tells Daryl that there will be battles nearby soon. It seems that the magical earth beast has the ability to predict danger. After the magical earth beast leaves, Daryl quickly leaves with the knockers. As the magical earth beast said, soon Bashverza arrives here riding Salamandra. Bashverza has always felt that he is the most gifted person in the demon race. He does not understand why his father always cares more about Daryl, and the people around him always like Daryl more. He wants to eliminate the heroes and humans to prove his strength. Bashverza, the most gifted young man of the demons, and Daryl, a descendant of human heroes, fight fiercely. They both use their strongest skills to attack, and Bashverza transforms into a demon with the forbidden hex magic to fend off Daryl's attacks. In anger, he pushes Daryl against the wall. At this moment, Daryl suddenly sees the childhood memories of Bashverza. When he was a child, Bashverza had always modeled himself on his father and always hoped that his father could spend more time with him. Later, his father brought back Daryl, and Bashverza found that his father liked Daryl very much. Afterward, Bashverza was sent to the Magic Academy, where he studied very hard to gain his father's approval and became the best student of the Magic Academy, until he later became one of the new four demon kings. However, all his efforts didn't work. His father always praised Daryl, while he was always unaccompanied and treated strictly. From that day on, Bashverza has had a strong feeling of hatred towards Daryl and felt that Daryl had stolen his father's love. The reason why Daryl is able to see Bashverza's memories is that the forbidden magic used by Bashverza has the ability to share the thoughts of the two, and Daryl finally understands why Bashverza attacked him. He greatly feels bad for Bashverza, and he has always wanted to become good friends with Bashverza since he was a child, but he doesn't know how to express his feelings. Because of the forbidden magic, Daryl also shares his feelings as a child with Bashverza, who learns that when Daryl was a child, because he was an orphan, he lived a tough life, and he always wanted to be friends with Bashverza but could not get a response. Bashverza feels Daryl's sincerity, and he realizes that he is wrong. He has always wanted to get his father's love, but he has neglected a good brother around him. Eventually, persuaded by Daryl, Bashverza gives up the fight. Later, with the help of their father Granverza, they team up to defeat the out-of-control Salamandra. Granverza hugs Bashverza tight and apologizes for ignoring his son's feelings. When the battle is finally over, Bashverza accepts the punishment of the Demon Lord. He is stripped of his status as the Four Demon Kings and becomes an ordinary demon from then on. Later, Bashverza comes to Daryl's house. He feels the long-lost warmth of the family, and when he sees Daryl's child and holds the child, the child actually calls out his name for the first time, which makes everyone on the spot very happy. They paint a picture of today's family reunion and hang it on the wall. In order to atone for his sins, Bashverza decides to compensate as much as possible for those he has hurt, and then begins to travel the world to see the world cherished by his brother. After sending Bashverza away, Daryl continues living his life. He begins his second life since meeting Marika, and he vows to protect this hard-won happiness. That brings the end of this anime. Daryl finally makes his wish come true. Because of him, demon and humans can eventually live in peace. In Daryl's mind, demons are not all bad, and humans are not all good, so he can't determine whether the people he meets are good or bad based on their races. This is perhaps what the author of the anime wants to say. I wonder what do you think after watching this anime? Comment below to tell me. Thanks for your watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you.